sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex. This is the Ramble. We're here until midnight tonight from New York, New York. The city so nice they named it twice. Hey, guess who's here? This is Larry Bubbles Brown. He's out in California being Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Which is a horrible thing to do. It, yeah, it's a horrible thing to do. It's an absolute downright shame. <laughs> So how are you, Larry? Good. We're getting through this. I think we're slowly opening up. Uh, I, clubs are, I think we're go- allowed to have 15% next week. So they couldn't make a profit at that, but uh, I guess that's a start. Yeah, well, we're opening, we've opened up out here at 125%. The reason being that they caught the governor coming on to another woman. <laughs> and, uh, what? That's a big, jo- that's a big joke it's in Albany. One more woman and he'll open up all the occupancy to 125%. <laughs> Is he going to survive? I haven't heard much out here about it. Well, I think he will, actually. Or, or he'll survive. Uh, he is not, what he's done is smart. Uh, our governor, Cuomo, we're talking about Andrew Cuomo out here in New York. Uh, he was smart in that he didn't cave, you know, where a lot of other people go, okay, I meant I was wrong. Oh, okay, I resign. He's not going anywhere, and they're tiring of the chase. Mm. Okay, so the, the news about this stuff has diminished. I mean, we haven't had another woman come forward and claim that he, you know, looked at her awkwardly. <laughs> um uh, in uh, in weeks, you know, because he's just stood his ground. He said, I'll wait for the reports to come in, you know, and the investigations that are going on to come in, and uh, everything will be fine, okay? So wow. he's he's waiting it out. Now, I don't know if he can run for another uh, term. Uh, that It would be his fourth term anyway, I mean, which is too much for a That's governor. Too much. too much for any public official, actually. Outside of Congress. Except FDR. Except FDR. Well, we found out with FDR that it wasn't a good idea to go that long. You know, it, it's funny, but when a, when a politician gets into their third and fourth term, they start getting a feeling of uh, ownership, you know, and they, they, they change even in the way they operate. I mean, it was like here we had uh, Bloom, Bloomberg who was the mayor of New York, and he did two terms, and then he changed the rules so he could run for a third term, and in his third term, he was doing goofy things like making sugar filled, uh, sugar sodas, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, had to be taxed at a larger tax rate, and things like that. Stuff that didn't really, I mean, yeah, it made some kind of sense on some level, but it was, it was like a king making a proclamation. You know? Yeah, right. So, so you don't want these guys to do more than that. You know? So. And out there, well, think, you, uh, you, you've you're got... Doing the right, I think you're right. Like, if you if you apologize for anything, you're done. It's well, over. don't apologize because the apologies are not being taken. They're not accepted and you're, they're, you're finished. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it should be, you know, in the old days it was, well, if you admit you're wrong, God bless you, go on with your job. All right. Now mm-hmm. it's oh you 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 uh, you said you were sorry. You must have been wrong. Resign. Yeah. So you know what's the incentive for anybody to admit they were wrong? Right. You know what's the incentive of people? Uh, whatever happened to uh, liking and admiring redemption? You know. So it, it, it's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. 
Yeah, it's very puritanical. There's no forgiveness anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what the hell? You know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I, I, it bothers me a lot that we have all these people going down for stuff. I mean, think about, you know, if you got caught early on in that whole Me Too thing, you're out of work forever, right? Forever. If you got, yeah. if it happened later on, like it did to uh, what's his name, uh, Ryan Seacrest. You hear anything about his problems? But when they came out, hey, he did this and he did that, and all of a sudden it disappeared because he was later on in the whole thing. But you look at a guy like Louis C.K., he's not, you know, he's he's working small clubs out in Long Island. And this is a guy practically owned, you know, a, a cable television, had so many shows on. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, um, uh, it, it's it's kind of ridiculous, kind of ridiculous. Uh, and and I don't I I just uh, feel that in the case of Louis C.K., come on, you know, the three women testified or, or didn't even testify. You know, they were never under oath. Okay, so how do we know that anything they were saying was true? Uh, we do want somebody's under oath. You figure as a good chance of it because they don't want to be caught in perjury and so on and so forth. But none of these women, I think, were under oath in this whole thing. They just said that Louis C.K. said to them, do you mind if I pull out my penis? And none of them said anything. And so he pulled out his penis. And nobody left the room. Right? But he pulled out his yeah. penis, and that was enough to get him like banned for life, and for, life. <laughs> for being, by the way, I always say for being a gentleman because he did ask permission. He did. <laughs> you know, it'd be great if you could interview him. I, I would like. Actually, I should see if I can find him somewhere. You I mean, do he, that. he, he may not like want to hear what he has to say. But. Well, obviously, if he hasn't been interviewed yet, considering how many comedians are on the internet, and you know how many have shows and podcasts and so on, and he's never appeared on any of them, it's apparent to me he doesn't want to talk about it. You know? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I, and, and then you look at a guy like Al Franken. I mean, that was innocent in that what he did was simply a stunt that was con consensual. I mean, the woman knew they were taking the phony, you know, funny photo of her being pretending like she's asleep and then he's pretending like he's grabbing her breasts, yeah. all right? Uh, it was for a gag photo. And for that reason, he left and resigned. Um, and in recent interviews, I think somebody like Letterman was interviewing him, and uh, he assailed him for not fighting it. That this was, really? you know, wow. yeah, that he just gave up easily. And he did. Um and I think there was something in, you got to remember, Franken never had his career path as being a politician. His career path was as a comedian and as a comedy writer. And somehow, because he uh, you know, knew his politics and was good at it, he became senator. All right? So when this thing hit, I think what he said to himself was, Fuck it! I don't need this. You know, I really don't need this. And he just he quit. And I think that was sad too because I think he was a you know a pretty good uh, pretty good senator and a real lefty. Uh, and I you know I'm I'm one who's always suspicious of anybody who says they're a real leftist. But this guy really walked the walk. I mean, he was consistent. And. I uh, I felt really bad about that, and we have this uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, who's the senator here in uh, in New York, who called for him to leave. And I yeah, I remember he got some pressure from within the party. That's yeah. why I remember that. But yeah, it was Kirsten Gillibrand, basically, and I will never forgive her for that. I will never vote for her. I'd vote for I'd vote for Trump for senator before I'd vote for her. You know, that's how much I hate her. But you have problems out in California with your governor. We got a, we got a recall for Newsom, yes. 
Is is there definitely it was a recall vote, right? Yeah, they got enough. They needed a million and a half signatures. They got two million, so it looks like that'll happen. Uh, the latest I've heard is it. They said they don't think anyone's going to beat him, but uh, he will have to go through this. They said the only person that could beat him would be uh, a high-level celebrity might be able to do it. High-level celebrity. Well, the only one that's come forward, and I don't know if you call it a high-level celebrity, is Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> yes, that would be. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, what happens, I understand out there on your ballot, it's really crazy. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, you have the recall, like shall we recall him or not recall him, and then if you say you want to recall him, you then have to vote for somebody to be governor, right on the same ballot. Yeah, and virtually any, it doesn't take, I mean, when they recalled Gray Davis, I think they had like 50 people on the ballot that ran for governor. They 30, I know, they were, I can't remember, it was like 36 and uh, number one, so therefore, whoever was going to win is the person whose name was most recognizable. And the most recognizable name was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. But it wasn't like he won by gazillion votes and everybody wanted him to be governor. It was just he had more votes than any of the other 36. And so um, that's how what Caitlyn Jenner figures could happen. Her name is known. Go do it, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so. But I remember that you know who came in number two. Let's see, we had uh, what's his name, uh, the midget, uh, black midget. Uh, you know, uh, what you're talking about? Oh, uh, uh, from uh, from different strokes. Yeah, he ran. I think he came in second or something like really? that. Yeah, <laughs> number three was a uh, porn actress. I remember there was a porn actress. There was a real, uh, it was quite a gallery of people. Yeah, yeah but anybody, you could you could have run for governor. <laughs> I could have come in fourth. <laughs> yeah, you could have run for governor. <laughs> you know, it, it's just a matter of you just, I think you have to get about a thousand signatures, something very minor. Very low, yeah. Yeah, and you can get on the on the ballot. So, I mean, the ballot in California was crazy. Now, what I don't get is why California is doing a recall when they know how devastating a recall can be because they had that one and it was a mess. You know, 36 candidates? Are you kidding me? Jeez almighty. And it, you, it isn't that the guy person who gets over 50% wins. It's the person who gets the most votes. So you can get 10% of the vote and become governor. So it's it's horrible. It's really horrible. Uh, well, the recall is uh, I think it that goes way back to the uh, the changes they made a hundred years ago. That was a big part of the progressive movement. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was it it's terrible. It's just terrible. Uh, but uh, so you know, uh, we, we don't. I don't think we have a recall system here in uh, New York. Um, otherwise, we would have heard about it already. You, know? you do not, right. And I think it's got to end in California because, you know, I mean, what you're really doing is you're giving in to buyer's remorse. You know, and I, I think that uh, getting a, a governor after he's become governor is ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And it's not healthy. And here, here's a governor who's always fighting for his job. Every minute, the, once he gets it, that's just the beginning. You could then be recalled. And in this case, it looks like they're trying to recall every governor who comes along, practically. Did they try, did they try a recall on uh, Jerry Brown? Do you remember? Uh, no. No. I, I don't think they did. But, you know, before Jerry Brown was Arnold Schwarzenegger. So here it is. Every other uh, governor is now being uh, uh, re an attempt to recall them. And I it, can't even remember why they recalled Gray Davis, but... Uh, yeah, I can't either. It was something. I just remember, I remember Arnold, he went on Jay Leno and made a big announcement, and the place went crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, and it's it's not healthy, and uh, it's my state, and I, I just have a feeling if I went back, I would hate California. 
You know, you probably would. Yeah. It's you know, I, I would hate there. San Francisco. I mean, I look at video of San Francisco and I, I feel homesick. Okay. Yeah. But if I were there, I think I'd probably be unhappy. You would. I mean, are you happy with San Francisco as it is? No, right? it's it's horrible. They have ruined Van Ness. They've well, we'll t- we'll talk more about that about the ruining of my hometown next time we talk to you. But it looks like we've run out of time, Larry. Yeah, but you give me a thought. Maybe I'll run for. Maybe I could get on yeah. the governor list this time. Larry Bubbles Brown for governor, <laughs> folks. Thanks, Larry. Hey, I got name recognition. Jerry Brown, Larry Brown. <laughs> Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there's Larry Brown. And let me turn on my lights. There we go. I always forget to do that until I look at myself and I go, gee, I'm in the, I'm in the dark thing. Anyway, I, I love this hat. I wear this hat more than any other. This is my Red Army hat from uh, China. It's, uh, you know something, it's, it's over 10 years old now, and look at it, it's still in great shape, look, just, there's uh, a little worn there, let me see here, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good, all things considered. Anyway, uh, thanks to Larry Brown, I, yeah, I really enjoy Larry, as you know, it's one of my little pleasures in life, I guess, that it happens, and, uh, here's, uh, to Larry, okay, and he'll be on again next week. I would have him on forever. I love him. Love the de- love him to death. Hmm. Anyway, there are some people waiting to talk to me. Uh, they're not all, usually a lot of people at this time ready to talk to me because sometimes I run over and I go till 11 and they don't want to sit there waiting and so on and so forth. So now's the time to call everybody. Come on. Yeah, you can call. Okay, let me see here. You know, I have to always get my head just right in here. Otherwise, I'm, I'm losing my chin and whatever. Anyway, let me, uh, let me bring in these people that are already waiting here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I've got to admit them. Okay, here we go. Here they go. Uh, should have, uh, uh, there's Alan and there's Charlie Wall. There's uh, uh, Trucker Steve and Charlie Wallace should be with us any moment. Uh, he's still in the process of joining. Sometimes people don't look and they, uh, okay. And oh, hey, we got a couple of other people, uh, people that we don't normally, uh, one person we don't normally have. Uh, and it's, uh, first of all, there's uh, John Larkin, Jeffrey Stein. Hey, and Tom Amiguchi. How you doing, Tom? Tom? Oh, yeah. Tom, are you there? Oh. Shit. There, there you go. Talk to me, Tom. Say hello. <laughs> Tom, say hello. We can hear him. You can all hear me, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Fine. So, uh, I can't uh, hear him, though. Yeah, you can't hear. You, we can, I can hear uh, Tom. I can hear. Wait, can you hear me, oh. Tom? Uh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I, uh, I had to, I had to mute myself. Oh, and, oh okay. Uh, <laughs> didn't want any, any echo or feedback. Oh, so okay. Between, all right. Anyway. But I, I just wanted to uh, correct you on some things on the, uh, on the recall. On the recall. Oh, okay. He, he, yeah, we're talking there, about, there we're, we're, let me just say, candidates. in case people just joined us, we were talking with uh, with uh, Larry Bowles Brown about the recall. Okay? It's happening in California. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's 135 um, candidates in that 2003 recall. And, uh, yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger did uh, come in first. Um but I just want to go ahead and let you know who, who the top 10 were. Um, the se- person who came in second was uh, Cruz Bustamante, who was the lieutenant governor. Mm-hmm. Uh, third place was Tom McClintock, mm-hmm. who's now a congressman up in uh, northeast uh, Cal- of the uh, state. Horrible. Uh, right Peter Kamehameha. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, John, wait. John, what did you say? He's a horrible right winger. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, okay. Um, Peter Cremeo, uh, uh-huh. of uh, the Green Party, came mm-hmm. in fourth. Mm-hmm. 
fifth place was Arietta Huffington. Uh huh. Sixth place was Peter Uberoff mm -hmm. of uh, Major League Baseball. Uh, number seven was Larry Flint. Really? He and, kept me, uh, he, I didn't even remember him as running, but I guess he, he ran. Did. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, he ran for uh, in, the, in the recall. Eight was Gary Coleman. Uh, nine was a guy named um, George B. Schwartzman. Really? And number <laughs> 10 was a woman named Mary Carey. Mary so Carey, who was the porn actress. Uh, oh, okay. It says independent. Okay, so that was so. She, yeah, so she came in tenth. <laughs> she came in tenth. Oh, okay. Yeah, independent. And so, just a couple other more things, and that is, um, fifty-five percent of the voters voted for the recall, uh, and forty-eight point six percent voted for Arnold Schwarzenegger. So he didn't even get oh, half of the, over half of the vote. He still got elected. So, that's the way it works. Yeah. Uh, yes, John. Yeah, you know this this current recall. It's it's backed by um, a lot of right wing pro Trump money, and um, they, they, they don't even know he, uh, if Trump even is going to back uh, their their candidate because Trump kind of likes Newsom because Newsom always said nice things about him, and he kind of <laughs> likes Newsom. So he, you know, even though Newsom's a Democrat, he might he may not even back the guy. Well, gee, I like Newsom less now that he had nice yeah. things to say about <laughs> Trump. <laughs> I think he was conning him. He, I he, think John and I were watching wait, wait, different wait, 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 news hey, stations. Hey, 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 Alan, your microphone oh, it was is conning like, him. It's on, it's, on, it's on stun. No, I just lowered it. No, you didn't. Well, I will again. Oh, listen. Oh, it's yeah. just terrible. Well. You got to turn it down. Oh, I'm going to try. Alan, what have you heard about that? Hold on a minute. I'm trying to figure out how to turn my microphone down again. Uh, yeah, well, it's so loud, it's distorted. Yeah. Well, I got I got my picture fixed. Let me let me get back to the. I can't seem to get back on the screen. You're you're oh. you're, you're on the screen, but you're very loud. Hold on a minute. Can you hear me now? Huh? Can you hear me now? Well, no, you're whispering. There you oh, go. Like that I doesn't got, count when you whisper. That yeah. better, you know I. I I don't understand this thing. Every time I, I log on, I've got to adjust my oh. volume. Yeah. <clears throat> so lower it a little more and you'll be fine. Oh, look. Oh, what look at that. A Curad Band-Aid. Very nice. But it's covered. Is, it's a Curade Band-Aid? No, it says Thrive. It's from... Uh, Kaiser. Kaiser, yeah. Oh, for Kaiser. It's so what, what Kaiser is... Kaiser Band-Aid. What did, what did you get? What kind? Pfizer. The Pfizer the one. The Pfizer. Okay. Yeah. I got a Charlie Brown uh, band-aid when I got mine. Really? <laughs> I, uh, you know what happened? I've been a, you know what happened? Been a achy, yeah. kind of. I'm sure you've had yours, right, Tom? Oh, in February, February 19th. February 19th was, um, was my, my second shot. Was my second shot. My honestly. second shot was February 27th. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, and and now when's your third shot? <laughs> <laughs> in a year. October. Do we know? They don't know if it's going to be a year. They're, they're trying to figure that one out. Right. You know, right now they have it up to six months. And maybe, you know, next thing we know, it'll uh, be a year. Uh, yeah, the be, six months is based on the trial participants. They yeah, gave yeah, the second yeah. shot right. of Pfizer right. six months ago. Right. So. Moderna, however, yeah. we haven't heard from yet. They haven't said what their no. expiration date is on that. It'll probably I, got, be I got the Moderna shot. You got the Moderna, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't been on here in a while. Uh, 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 that's Matt. Uh, my, my, my alter ego, Matt Brewer. Matt Brewer. Oh, <laughs> Matt. How are you? I didn't it's, notice. I didn't I'm realize. Good, man. Why? It's, it's, this, been, it's been like a couple of years. Since you called last. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was talking to Phil recently and I'm like, I've been so busy and I was like, oh, I've been listening to Alex in a while. And I, what, I what's been going I, on in your life, Matt? I'm, I'm getting uh, my MBA. Oh, I really? Got new, oh, okay. I got a new job. I've been there about a year. Yeah. Um, and I decided to get my MBA. So I'm going in, in, in a ton of debt, but Hopefully it'll be worth it. Good for you. Good for you. Now, where do we leave you off last time? I, you know, you were. I can't. I feel like I. It was when I was getting divorced and stuff. It, it, oh boy. You know. 
Yeah, well, you had gotten married. You had just gotten married. I got married at 23 or 24, one of those, and got divorced at like 25. Now I'm 29, so. Mm -hmm. And and have you have you decided not to get married again, or or? Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's. I mean, that's, have, not, some, that's have, not something on my agenda. Right I mean, have now. you fallen in love since? Yeah, I actually have a girlfriend right now. Oh, you have a she's girlfriend. Hurt. Yeah. Uh huh. And is she pressuring you to marry? She's not recently. Um, she's oh, wait, what do you 20, mean not recently? She did. <laughs> she, she's twenty seven, so she she had actually already been married as well. Oh, so. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So the two yeah, of you married to a military guy. You know how the military. Yeah. Well, so you're not you're not ready to just run out and get married right now. No. No. no, no. Was that your real name, Matt Brewer? No. No. It's a I. Originally, I, I created a fake name because I didn't know if an employer would ever <laughs> listen to this <laughs> and hear what I had to say and say, hey, I heard what you said on Alex Bennett's show. I'm going to fire you. Am, am I wrong or were you kind of pro-Trump at the time? No, oh, I, wa I was very pro-Trump originally. I um, mm -hmm. wasn't happy with a lot of things that he did economically. I feel like he did a pretty good job. I actually voted for Biden in the recent elections so. yeah yeah but what made you lose faith in in trump not that i need to ask <laughs> um yeah it was just it honestly the ridiculousness around the fake elections and all that stuff mm -hmm. and how it seemed like he just wanted to become a dictator and that's what kind of made me just be like dude like this is ridiculous there is there's not World, there's not widespread election fraud, you know the whole the whole thing with him and the uh, the whole capital, um, whatever was yeah. just was ridiculous, and and I think that made me, you know, I I don't have faith in the in both parties. I actually hate both parties. Um, I thought Trump was somebody who was going to be an outsider and somebody that would just give it to us straight, and then he turned into somebody who was obviously very partisan. And somebody that just wanted to keep power, so I didn't, you know, I yeah. didn't believe in him at all, and I didn't think he was he was a great leader throughout um, COVID and throughout everything. Yeah, for the last couple of years. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Very nice. Uh, you know, Matt. The reason I ask you, I'm Alan. The reason I ask you is, uh, Phil and I are texting, and I text him, Matt Brewer is on the show <laughs> and he's like i don't recognize the name and i'm like oh okay and i asked tell him, him tell him Corey is on the show and he'll Corey, huh c-o-r-e-y yeah okay. o-r-e-y yeah yeah <clears throat> anyway so well, good to have you and look who else is here the ladies owners on the on the line I I, yeah it, it, it does wow. not change it permanently i'm trying to change it now but i forgot it's friday uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway that's owner ladies and gentlemen and okay. we will keep referring him to owner until he changes it hey, alex mm. see the story that i shared on your messenger uh yes uh uh, it, it, tell, Kyle tell, House. it will tell tell them about it. Okay. Well, the police departments, cops around the world or around the country, I guess, have been donating money to Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, this is the guy who went and shot how many people? Yeah. Two. Two. Well, I he think. shot three and killed two. Right. Two of them died. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and and so who's giving him money? Public officials, cops. Wow. Why? Why? <clears throat> For his defense. For his defense. That's, yeah. that's actually, you know, I get uh, you know Republican uh, fundraising emails because back in 2012, I registered Republican to. Um, vote in the presidential primary yeah. and even though i never get any money i keep getting emails from them and uh yeah i even got emails from rittenhouse's mother pleading for defense money so yeah it's yeah. It's, it's the the part of the big con yeah this know? is one of the shootings that you almost forgot you know uh because god it was just a small one yeah <laughs> you know i mean today what is this i mean America, what is with you? 
What is with all this shooting? 19 years old. He killed eight people. I was listening to Indianapolis on the radio. yesterday. Eight people. Fucking now, FedEx. I, every day. Every day. I admit FedEx doesn't deliver to my door, and I'm mad at them, but I don't get that things. mad. <laughs> See, he was, to my door either. He home. was just fed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, can Alan. I, can I, can I go through? I did a little research into the accidental shooting of Dwayne Wright in uh, Maryland, in mm -hmm. Brooklyn Center, not in Brooklyn. Yeah, right. What's that? Brooklyn Center. Brooklyn yeah. Center. Can I? I did a little research. Yeah. And uh, so I, I'll, I'll tell you what I found: a 20-year-old black man pulled over for expired cab. Now this is a combination of. News, police story, police story. Okay, we'll get on with it. Let's, I am. Yeah. Right there is. Okay, and, and he had a warrant for aggravated assault with a firearm, mm -hmm. choking a 75-year-old woman, then robbing her of $820 in 2019. Mm -hmm. This was not your little angel boy. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think he deserved to be killed. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> right. But he was no angel. is what you're saying. Right. So, uh, uh, well, the family's going to portray him. You know, well, I mean, you know, so, is... always show the communion pictures. You know that. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. right. I would upon, say the woman that shot him days. also didn't think he deserved to be killed. No. Upon, upon trying to arrest him, he started to resist. Officers tried to gain control. One officer, the female officer, pulls out. You can see it on the body cam. What looks like a Glock 17 or Glock 19 9 millimeter, common for law enforcement officers to use this, and says taser, 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 and then shoots uh, Dante in the chest one shot and says to the other officers, oh, my God, I just shot him, or oh, shit, I just shot him. He drives a half a block, collapses. The police and EMT right. provide medical right. care and right. crime. Well, we know all this. So, yeah, so... Oh, I didn't. I didn't know everything, yes. so I didn't know what I didn't know what his warrant was for. So, people were in side text and talking about can't people like Robert says, can't people tell the difference between a a handgun and a taser? In this case, the taser I went on their website, yeah, weighs two pounds, and the Glock 17, Glock 19 weigh about two pounds loaded. So, she did have her taser on her left side and her gun on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I think that... I, well, think what, I, I what, said this, I said this uh, last night. I, I somewhat feel sorry for her just because I, it, it was obvious just from listening to her that it wasn't what she meant to do. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, the so, police, the police, uh, one, one more quick thing here, yeah. owner, just real quick here. So the, the police... Um, train uh, usually three or four times a year with a firearm. So you draw the firearm and, and train on a range. Mm -hmm. But a lot of law enforcement agencies they're finding out don't train with the taser. And so a police officer may pull his gun, uh, you know, several times a day, thousands mm -hmm. of times a year, okay. All right. and not deploy the taser very often. Uh, they need uh, to change yeah. that training. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Owner. Jason. So, so here's uh, two kind of things to uh, actually her defense. Um, one, usually a cop pulls a trigger when he's pulling the trigger on his gun. Mm -hmm. He doesn't only shoot one time. You know, usually they empty the clip. But uh, the um, uh, crap, I had one more point that I was going to make about with a taser. But yeah, you, usually a cop pulls his gun and he's shooting. He does not just shoot one time. Okay. You know, and that, I think that's where she – and I, that, that is where it was – how often does an average cop actually pull his gun in their career? Daily. Pull Wait, their gun on somebody? I don't daily? Know that's not, true. Well, Wait a minute. Hold on a second. No, Hold no, on no. A second. no. How <clears throat> often does a cop pull his gun and aim it at somebody in their career? Well, I was a cop. And so, uh, you know, when you make traffic stops, a lot of times you don't know what's in the car, who's in the car, whatever. And so you pull your gun. And keep it next to the holster, aim down with your whatever your gun hand is, and you get the person to roll the window down. You talk to the person, and establish a rapport. And you can look in the car, and you can uh, see if they're 
And, and then you reholster the gun. You know what I? You, my, you know that. What you I know, heard is most cops never pulled their gun. That's what my I've heard. My cousin was a cop in Chicago for thirty years. He rose to the rank of captain. He never drew his gun once. And, and that's where I'm saying with her, and that's where they maybe do need to do more exercises. Just like within boxing, you know, you do a one, two, 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 one. You know, maybe they need to do that as a practice of to pull your weapon on a yeah, weekly maybe. basis. Yes, uh, uh, Vernon. I, I heard a news report also that uh, when the officers are trained on a taser, they are not trained to aim for the chest with a taser. True no, or false, I, Alan? No, I, I think it's false. I, I didn't I didn't go through taser training, but when you fire the taser, it goes up and then it kind of has an arc. I don't know the degree that comes down. And they do aim for the chest uh, because it's a big piece of body that you can get a large uh, electrical shock control, whatever, over. Um, I, I've seen a few of these taser videos on YouTube, if anybody cares, mm -hmm. and you see the police shooting at the wrong angle, and the guy gets it in the groin. So, yeah. Darn. So, anyhow. And boy, did he come like a motherfucker. I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Uh, but I, mean, I, I don't know. I, it's just that I, I, I don't believe all the guns. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And it's always young people shooting too. I always notice. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, th this kid in uh, in Brooklyn uh, Center, <clears throat> I think it's called. Um, this situation was the kid was not a good kid. He obviously had some problems, all right? Uh, but still, I don't think that she wanted to shoot him and wasn't using that to protect herself. She thought she actually was using a taser. I mean, you, you could take this to court and just listen to the video and hear her go, taser, 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 and you knew what her intention was. You can hear it on YouTube right yeah. now. But I still yeah. think I still think the way we handle these situations has to be reassessed. Because and, and obviously it was the same day that she quit, wasn't it? But did yeah. she quit? I, I believe it was the same day that she resigned. Well she resigned after this incident happened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine, I, I can only imagine uh, her state of mind right now, and it probably has nothing to do with losing her job. Or having to go on trial, you know, for uh, for uh, whatever they're charging her with um, uh, second degree manslaughter. Se second yeah. degree manslaughter. I think she. I bet she is genuinely upset by what happened. You know. And I think that's why she resigned in part. Yeah. 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 Matt, are you still there? It's like he went bye bye. Hmm. Looks like we must have called him. Huh? I'm joking. It's a Phil must have called yeah. Tom, do you have your hand up? I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say. I was wondering if I should use the the uh, the hands raised function of uh, of the uh, <laughs> zoom like that. You know. The, Is that? Yeah. That's uh, that's the bottom uh, bottom on the reactions. Yeah. But I was gonna say another thing uh, and to uh, go with what Vernon was saying or follow up. Also, I heard. Okay, a bad glare off this. Um, I also heard that you shouldn't be a taser shouldn't be shot into a, a moving car or somebody behind the wheel who could continue to drive like this guy did. Yeah. So it's, that's a couple of things that she did wrong. Oh, he, Another he, thing I just want to just also mention this he is wasn't this driving the car when she tased him. This is like something that that happened back in 2009 uh, with um, oh not having a uh, with. Uh, uh, what's his name uh, at uh, the Fruitvale Station? Uh, I, uh, Oscar Grant. Oscar Grant, yeah, with Johannes Messerly, uh, who was supposedly uh, trying to go for his taser and 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 shot uh, Oscar Grant with his gun. And so, th as I said, this was 2009. Uh, so there should be at least something learned in all these years, but it appears that uh, that there hasn't. Yeah, when you're under stress, you, it, this comes from the military, you resort back to training. 
And a lot of times, if you're not used to grabbing the taser, who knows? Yes, Mr. I, Owner. So uh, here's one thing in Michigan I think is funny, that if you have a CCW, you can buy, I think you do have to still get like a, a special license to have an actual taser that shoots projectiles. Right. But it's illegal to have an actual taser where it's just a handheld thing where somebody has to be right there. Stun, your, stun hey, gun. Yeah, stun gun. It, it's illegal for that. It, it makes no sense to me. I can have a taser where I can shoot somebody from a distance, but I can't have a stun gun where I have to be within arm's reach where they're, you know, maybe attacking me. It, it, to yeah, me it makes it's, no like, sense. it's like New Jersey. No hollow points allowed. So what you do then is you have a non hollow point that doesn't expand in somebody. And with a nine millimeter, they're a pretty fast little round. It goes through that person because it didn't expand and, and, goes and through another kill somebody behind them. Yeah. So there's a there's another stupid law still. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, because it didn't expand, you might not have killed the person. That's right. That's true too. It, it, it makes mm -hmm. a small wound channel and you'll probably have to follow up with more shots. So and you'll probably have to go to jail because you didn't kill him. <laughs> well, you know, I just I just think this is going on. We, we, the, the whole the whole between the police and the public, Nut jobs. the 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 use of guns is just getting out of hand. Yeah. Uh, and and I think there needs to be there need to be some laws about it. I'm sorry, kids. You, pl you hi, Matt. Uh, I, I see you there. Let me just finish what I was saying and I'll go to you. Uh, uh, kids, you've had enough time to play with your toys, and you're not using them responsibly, so we're going to have to take them away from you. Yes, Matt? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, they, the police need more training. They don't get enough training when they become officers. I mean, I could easily become a police officer within, God, what, like six months or something? Like, they need to go through several years of schooling and be held to extreme standards i mean you're dealing with people's lives out well there. You're, you're you're dealing with, you're dealing with somebody who you're handing a gun to and telling him right. to enforce the law exactly. and, and the trouble is is that yeah maybe in chicago you have to go through a lot to be uh to be uh uh, 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 uh to be a cop but in maybe doofus minnesota it's sign up at the local store you know <laughs> And I think that's the problem. Grab a, grab a shotgun and go shoot black people. I mean, that's exactly. Dirty. Yes, Ray. Ray or Mike? Sorry, is sorry, I was muted. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a, two things. Um, Alan, uh, years ago, I wanted to be a fireman, like 30 something years ago. And uh, I remember that the people who wanted to be policemen, it was a big deal. They had to go through a long academy to even get there. Like, and it wasn't even like, certain they were going to get the job after a year or two is that still something that happens or so is that Cal oh yeah you're in california right right yeah right. okay so so am i and so i really only know really california but california a law enforcement officer goes through what's called the post academy and there's like 50 of them in the state or something stands for peace officer standard and training and it's it's basically about 40 to 60 weeks the one one of the longer ones is the California Highway Patrol. So, okay. yeah, but firefighter, you go through, you take a, a couple courses in the community college on fire science, and you will be big and strong, and and you yeah, can that was way a easier. Yeah, way easier. And the other thing I wanted to tell you, maybe you've heard about this, Alan. There, there was a the teacher in Redwood City about a year and a half ago, you know, a, a white guy at Gunn High School, and he, and he, his him, his wife just had a kid, and he couldn't sleep for night on end he hadn't slept the doctor gave him some medicine he uh, had a super bad reaction to it ended up going insane like cutting his own throat and stuff the wife went crazy he was in the backyard bleeding out the cops came saw him with the knife in the backyard where they were for, there for 12 seconds killed him and they're well, suing it. You didn't have to bleed out the rest of the way no i'm sorry yeah no but i mean it's like <laughs> no. i mean what but like if you look at the stats the cops are killing they're killing blacks and hispanics at a higher proportion per capita but they're killing everybody i mean we just don't i mean they're killing everybody yeah, ray, so ray with the fbi i looked up this yeah. real quick here the fbi 
has studies that found that black drivers are far more likely, I'm sure you'll agree with this, Charlie, probably everybody, yeah. will, are far more likely to be stopped by the police than white drivers. They are twice as likely to be searched and found to have nothing illegal in their possession versus white drivers. Yeah. And black drivers are four times more likely to have a bad outcome in a traffic stop than a white driver in this right. country. And yes. I, I, I agree. I would yeah. just I just wanted to make it I just wanted to say that there's a there is a like even a bigger problem than what we're seeing. Like we're seeing oh, sure. a problem against co people of color, but then there's like even a bigger one, like for, against everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> yep. Tom Yamaguchi has his hand up. Can't hear you, Tom. I need to unmute myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was some background noise, so I mm. muted myself. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's one of the reasons, well, that's the big reason why the city of Berkeley is examining getting the police out of out of the traffic control business and establishing a, what's called Berkeley Department of Transportation or BERCDOT. And the and that's because a lot of this a lot of these events happen after so-called routine traffic stops. So why do you need someone with a round uh, going around the gun just to give somebody a, a, a parking ticket? Yeah, it so doesn't Tom, make we any talk, sense. We actually or, talk or about would say stuff. your 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 uh, registration tags are expired or or you ran a red light. I mean for one thing we've got so many cameras now, you know, we could just put a put a, a ticket in the mail here. You know, you ride a red light, pay the ticket. So, yeah, yeah last, oh, wait, last wait, wait, Jason, Jason's got his hand up. Oh, sorry. So, I, I'm just curious. So, like, does it do a disservice to the whole movement and stuff when you actually sit there and hold people up who are resisting arrest and something bad happened to them, though? You know, maybe concentrate on the ones that, you know, didn't do anything wrong. What, like, Alan, you were just talking about the statistics of people being pulled over and not even finding anything wrong or anything but then when they hold up you know something bad happened to somebody but they were resisting arrest okay let me ask this question though that and i said this last night when it comes to protection okay who's more protective the person's being pulled over or the cop i mean he's got everything at his disposal as i said dear that weapons belt that they have whatever you called it last night out is full of just an arsenal of stuff between tear gas and tasers and guns and bullets and that and a radio and everything. And as I also said last night, if I'm in trouble and I call for a cop, uh, they'll be here in 10, 15 minutes. If I'm a cop and I yell for help, they're there in three seconds. Okay, so who's got the advantage here? And am I supposed to be so sympathetic towards protecting the cops when they're already doing a damn good job of protecting themselves already? I want to protect the person who's been stopped from having some kind of an accident or whatever, like happened in, uh, in, in Brooklyn Center, uh, happen. Okay? That we have to avoid. I want protection from the cops. Okay? Yes, yes, Alan, you're kind of taken over here, but go ahead. I'm sorry. You yeah. want me to stop? Well, no, but I mean, you know, wait for your best shot, but answer that for me, would you? Uh, well, I, I was going to. So depending on your need, if you just had a, a burglar, you walked home, opened the door, your house was tore apart, the burglar's gone, mm -hmm. the cops may take hours to get there. There's no emergency. To you, there is, because you just had stuff stolen and your yeah. private space was invaded. If you have somebody in your house, a home invasion robbery or something, guy's got a gun or a knife, yeah. the police are going to get there a lot quicker to protect you. Yeah. So, and yeah, they protect each other because they don't have to call a number and dial a cell phone and they have two-way radios and, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, they need to protect each other. Usually when they yeah. ask for help, they need it. Charlie, what's on your mind in this whole discussion? Well, all I know is unless I'm lying on the floor bleeding, I ain't calling the cops. The cops are not my friend. Hmm. Okay. I can get that. And you know something? It's funny, Charlie. You may find that unusual for a white guy like me, 
but I don't never consider them my friends either. I was o I always considered them almost the enemy. An adversary. An adversary, yeah, especially from my days when I was at, uh, in, uh, really, you know, in demonstrations and things like that. I came to completely disrupt them because they weren't there to protect me. They weren't there to make sure that because I was protesting, they were standing up for my right to protest, you know. And that, uh, um, and then I came to the belief, and I still hold this belief, the main job of the police department, and they're being used, is to protect property, not people. Okay? Yes, uh, Vernon. You've, you've advocated this for some time, Alec, and I'm tending to agree with it more and more, and that is we need to get rid of the war on drugs. Yeah. The Breonna Taylor shooting in Louisville Good example, Kentucky, yeah. was related to a no-knock warrant because they thought that her ex-boyfriend was stashing drugs in her apartment. Destroying drugs. Destroying well, drugs. you know, there are, there are wars against nations. There are wars on various things, but you don't take something like drugs and have a war against them. You maybe have a program to try and solve the drug problem and to lower the incidence of drug use. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, 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 you're right. I mean, Breonna Taylor would probably still be alive if the police weren't preoccupied with arresting drug dealers. Now, the good thing is the state legislature just their last session, they just outlawed, flat out outlawed no-knock warrants in the state. That's where? In Kentucky? In Kentucky. Oh, wow. That's good. You mean the home of, uh, of some of the worst senators in the, in the world? Yeah, well, you know, yeah. I never voted. I never voted for Mitch McConnell, but I still get uh, emails from him on on various. You know, things. I honestly believe that Mitch McConnell never voted for himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, a lot of people don't know this, but he was married before he he married Elaine Chow. He was married before and had two kids, but you never hear him talking about his kids. Oh. What was his wife's name? I don't remember the first wife's name. But uh, Maybe it was I, I, do know, I do know that, that he was married once before and had two children by the first <laughs> wife, but you never hear him talking about it. Is there something, there isn't, I don't think anything wrong with the joke I'm about to say, but when he has sex with her, does he chow down? Wasn't it Newt Gingrich who um, he like divorced yes. his wife while she was dying of you know uh, to begin with she never that. died she never died but she was in the hospital but she was in the hospital with cancer and I, and uh he went to the hospital to announce to her that he was going to divorce her now, you know she you, was pretty you, sick they thought she was going to die yeah well you wait until she either dies yeah. or gets better and then you bring the subject up you don't go to the hospital while she's maybe dying you know I mean, if she okay. dies, you're off the hook. If she doesn't die, then you announce yeah, but it. That's, that's what that one Democratic senator tried to do, and then he was running for president, and they found out yeah, that he was running was, around, so it yeah, didn't work that way either. <laughs> didn't Giuliani do something like that, too? Giuliani. Oh, oh. He, divorced, he, he announced on TV that he was divorcing his wife. His wife. And he, yeah. And he was she, she was an actress, and her name was, oh, boy. Last night, I came up with a name, and then I just lost it tonight. But last night, just off the top of my head, I came up with the name of the guy who got killed in Brooklyn for selling cigarettes. Donna Hannah? Huh? Oh, no, no. Eric Garner. Eric Garner. Eric yeah. Garner. I came up with it like that. Yeah. Donna Hanover. That's, that's, yeah. That was, that's, like, that was Giuliani's wife. Yeah. She went to my high school. Really? In, in Sunnyville, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, really? oh, where'd you go to high school? Fremont High School. Oh, you know who else went there? Terry Hatcher. Yeah, yeah, I knew her. Yeah. You oh, do you know Terry Ken Hatcher? Good? Well, I knew her when she was in high school. Well, welcome to our know. high school. My friend went yeah. out with her. I didn't Terry expect Hatcher's her. Terry Hatcher's a lot of shit. He's he's no kin. Damn. Not really. Yeah, man, Charlie. <laughs> wow. Well, not as hot as she used so, to be. But I have the same age. Of course. <laughs> 
I have an. But then again, I'm not as hot as I used to be. Either. No, wait a minute. I never I, was. I, 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 I never was, was hot. Tonight, but... Oh man, you're looking pretty red. You look like you might be pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, you look red today. Alex. Well, you see, here's the reason I look red. Hold on. A second. Let, me, let me show you this. Uh oh, white he's balance. Temperature. White balance. <laughs> no, it is a matter of white balance. It's a matter of my uh, lights. Yeah, we'll uh, the, uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I gotta find my lights. Here's my lights. Okay. Look at this. Watch this. Watch it change. See? Yeah. See? There you go. Okay. Now you're just ghost. Now you're looking too too white. Yeah. <laughs> you're all pasty. Let, let me just bring it down here a little bit. There we go. Is that is that does that look as red? No. No. Okay. All right. Time for a couple. Oh. The, the reason why I keep it orange is because of these lights get very bright and, um, you know, whatever. But that, that looks okay, doesn't it? Come on. Yeah, it looks fine. See, I have an right. idea that I'd like you guys to consider. Okay. And it is that we ought to invent some kind of a, a little thing that the black people can put over their face before they drive a car, so they look white. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> hey, you know, you know. <laughs> Damn, I was white gonna make face. a joke. What was that <laughs> disease? What's that disease called, I Charlie? Think Charlie would agree. That's not a bad idea. What do you think, Charlie? Charlie, what, it would have helped me a lot back in the seventies and eighties. There you go. What's that? Michael disease? Jackson. Sold over a lot. Yeah, but you know, if you put a mask on. <laughs> that made your face white except for the lips. It would look like you're in a minstrel show, and that wouldn't look good either. That would work. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. yes, Thank Alan. You, Mr. Benny. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Alan. How about a little sign? You see these little signs on the back window, you know, driving with children? How about a little sign that says white male driver? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, Alan, like when you were driving your car, yeah, your regular car, do you have some kind of a sticker that says, I was a cop, or I am a cop, or was a cop? Yeah. Well, I, I, I have a police memorial sticker. It looks just like the hat. It's okay. got an American flag with a thin blue line in it. So I was always yeah. tempted on when I, when I was driving cars. I don't drive them anymore here in New York, but when I was Thank in God. California, I was very tempted to just put on a bumper sticker that says, my kid is an honor student. You know, <laughs> and I don't have any kids, but I figured it'd be fun to just. I, you know. My girlfriend has uh, something on her her Jeep um, Wrangler that says she's a nursing. Uh, she's a nurse. So oh, yeah, really? that, that'll apparently that, get, that helps too. That'll prevent her from getting stopped. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Was, uh, I was driving in Wyoming a couple years ago. Oh, Wait, what is that noise? <laughs> Kevin, 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 you're making so much noise. You get oil on that shit. Yeah. yeah. The well, most racist bumper sticker I've ever seen in my life. And it, it was, you know, just it's all kinds of that shit in, in, up there in that area of the country. They probably don't think that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, any thoughts, uh, Kevin, on any of this? No, I pretty much said my stuff last night. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, you know, it, it's, um, yep. I just think we put a little too much emphasis on law and order. Okay. Um, I, I think we have to realize that most people are law abiding, you know, I think so. and I think we have to trust that people are before they aren't. And I think the problem the police have is that and I've said this before, I want them back on the beat. I want them back out on the street walking the beat. So they're talking to the neighbors, and they're talking to the people who live in that neighborhood. You know, when I was a kid, we used to, now here I go, I'm becoming one of those old people, because when I was a kid, but when I was a kid, you had a cop who was on, on his beat, and he usually you could find him on a certain number of different corners throughout the day. And you knew him by name. And he knew you by name. And so you, you, you had an ongoing relationship with this cop. And uh, he had a different attitude about the neighbors. Now you have a cop, and they're in cars, 
They have no connection. And the yeah. only time they ever see trouble is when they get out of that car. And so their whole relationship to the outside world, outside of that vehicle, is a very negative perception. Would you agree with that, Alan? I, I agree that I would like to see more walking beats, too. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason when you were a kid that you they were out in walking beats is because the car had not been developed yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, but, but I, I think you're right, Alex. I think a walking beat is a much better way to get to I, know I the think cop. it's a way of creating, especially in black neighborhoods, it'd be a way Absolutely. of creating a better relationship between Absolutely. the police and the... Uh, I'll bet there's yeah. proof of that out there. By the way, that... The that, they, that is they need to make the cops live in the neighborhoods they patrol. Yeah. Yeah, that's... What happened to Jack? He just came and he went. Hmm. Oh, well. Yeah, I got, I got, I actually got a DUI uh, back over a year ago, <laughs> and uh, yeah, my experience was not pleasant. But um, you know, I am a, a white person, so I'm fortunate to, you know, not be. I was scared, but you know, I can't imagine going through it as a black person. Well, because yeah, they're Where afraid you that somebody's gonna. I you know, you, you're afraid that somebody's going to pull a gun on you. What state are you in? I'm in Maryland. Oh, okay. So I was, yeah, I was, I blew a uh, 0.17. Oh, <laughs> wow. And yeah. was arrested, put in the back of a cop car, chained to a bench. My feet and hands were, uh, were in cuffs and uh, had my dad pick me up. You're and, almost as big a criminal as Jeff. Hey, so, so are you still married? No, no, I'm not married anymore. <laughs> God. Wow. But, oh, so like, yeah, point zero, almost point two zero oh is pretty drunk. So, you know, uh, you're, the, super the cop drunk. saved you from a bigger headache. If you had Death. gotten in an accident and killed somebody in California, yeah. that's murder in the second degree. For sure. Wow. And your $10,000 first offense in California would have been dramatically different. So yep, and that's that's pretty much how much it cost me ten thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah, it cost you ten thousand. I'll never make again because driving yeah. drunk is definitely not worth it. So. Well, then you learned your lesson. I for sure learned. So the fi the fine was it a fine a ten thousand dollar fine? No. So it was. Um, I luckily have a family friend that was a lawyer that could that could take my case for only fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. oh. But oh. the fines were about. I don't know, between uh, probably like $1,000, but then you have to take a course for six months at $40 a week. Mm -hmm. Plus you got to pay the, in I had to get an interlock in my car that cost <laughs> almost $100 a month. And then wow. probation, supervised probation, which cost $120 a insurance month. Insurance cost going up? Actually, Jack did that. cost did not go up. Really? Surprisingly, yeah. Oh, Jack's really? wife probably did that interlock thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Jack, Jack Bishop has just joined us, and that's the guy you see behind the microphone, and you don't see his face. You just see his eyes poking out here and there. It's almost Kilroy. like Kilroy might have been yeah. here. <laughs> Can you hear us, Jack? Isn't that a high risk? I guess he can't figure out how to run Zoom. This is the <laughs> ultimate. And he's he got his real name, too. Yeah. Yeah, See, man, I'll, name I'll tell you. Oh, I Irv got Jackson. Lucky as hell. Yeah, he does have his real name there. <laughs> Irv, I, can I, you I, hear I, me, I, Jack? I, no, <laughs> not. Oh, connecting to audio. Okay, there it's. It should be connecting to audio. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no, no, no. no. Um, well, it doesn't. I was going to say my divorce cost me ten thousand dollars. So. <laughs> and, and I was going to tell divorce cost me money. Too. You got away cheap, Charlie. <laughs> I, was, I was tell Matt I actually got in a drunk driving accident. I crashed into a parked car across the street from my house, mm -hmm. and I got hey, a can, careless can driving ticket. Now? Yeah, now. we can, we yes. can yes. hear you now, yeah. Jack. Yeah. Now, if you move your microphone, we could see you. There, there we there. go. Hey, there you there go. You Anybody go. who reveals my real name dies by sunup. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, it, Jack, it's... You want, you want a lesson on, on how to change your name on, on Zoom? Yeah, just ask Alex. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, I, I can do it. I can, I can do it. Uh, the, let's see here. Uh, I can go here. 
wait a minute, I go here, yeah. and then I go you rename, uh, uh, yeah. and then I say, the Watch it, he's going to name you asshole. Guy <laughs> I've been called asshole at before. Midnight. I wanted there to change my name. The guy on things. at midnight. There we go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> The guy that should come on before Alex, so I can call in once in a while. Yeah. Plus, it's not midnight here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you've been hearing any of what we've been talking about here, uh, Jack? What I find is interesting is your audio is about 20 to 30 seconds behind for me. Really? Yeah, I don't know why, but... You're watching on YouTube. Oh, you're what? watching it on YouTube. That's yeah. the reason why. Turn yeah. it off of YouTube. Turn YouTube off. Yeah. Don't just don't look, watch it on the at internet. It on Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably well, a Zoom took, window behind it. I took your instructions, Alex, that you gave me the other day about where to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have been. Yeah, I've been listening to it. Yeah. Can you hear and, me? And uh, my. Uh, my, my thoughts were, uh, I had been in a conversation all day with somebody about the... Can, can, I've been in a conversation... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jack, Jack, yeah. can, can you hear me okay? I hear you fine. Make sure your browser isn't on. Okay, I mean, oh. or that your your browser can be on, but... Uh, if if you answer you that quick, he's good. you got to turn your audio <laughs> off of there. That's the problem. If all right, let's see if I can do something about good. that. Uh, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's just, Let's uh, try this. Okay. No, I'm good. All right. There we go. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. anyway, go ahead. Anyway, you were talking to a friend today. Well, I was talking. The guy's not a friend. Uh, he's a new Facebook acquaintance. We were talking about some of the things that you were talking about and also particularly about these cop shootings in America. Mm -hmm. And this guy, uh, I prefer to use the term Anglo, quite frankly. For anybody okay. that's Northern European. Yeah, move your mic a little bit over so we can see your face okay. again. There you go. All right. And uh, in talking to this guy, he did. He genuinely did not get what black America is upset about. Oh, jeez. You know, he said it's, it, this all happens. These shootings all happen because some black person, because there have been women shot as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. who misbehaved or had criminal intent or had a criminal record. Mm -hmm. And is it, Scott Boddicker here? I don't see him, but... No. Uh, I got to tell you, uh, the time that I got stopped, and Charlie knows this story, for driving the wrong kind of car. Yeah. What happened... A sports uh, car? No, no, no. <laughs> Happened shortly after. It must have been a Volvo. More no, embarrassing than that. It, it was wow. an American-made car. Cadillac. No. no. More embarrassing. Let's not go through this. Let's just get the story here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I get. I. You know, I'm living in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I've got this new car that I bought. And one day on one of the inner city, uh, one of the city freeways, I get pulled over by a cop. Now, I knew I wasn't speeding. I hadn't changed lanes. In the car with me was one of the salespersons from the radio station because we were going to a meeting with a client. So I pull over. The cop says, I want to see your driver's license and your registration. So I hand it to him. He looks up and says, all right, you can go on. So I turned to the sales guy who happened to be Anglo. And I said, what the hell was that about? He said, you're driving the wrong kind of car. You're driving a Rambler American convertible. And he doesn't believe that anybody black would drive a Rambler American convertible. What do you think? You get a Cadillac? You know, and uh, one of the writers in Car and Driver magazine told a similar story about a black buddy of his who had a Buick Skylark that had been painted a non-standard color. He got the car. He had a friend whose father was a dealer. They special ordered the car for him. This is back when you could get this done. And the car was painted a Cadillac maroon as a special order. 
cost him a few hundred dollars more. Can you get to the end of the story here, Jack? Uh, right. Here's the end of the story. He gets <clears throat> pulled over, and the cops tell him, we're looking for a car that matches this description. His, his white buddy, who he was in college with, said there was no other car in the entire part of the country that was the same color as that car. So that's the kind of bullshit yeah. that black folks encounter. Jason, Driving. Jason. Driving. Oh, Driving. And the other day, one of my grandkids who lives in Minnesota, close to Minneapolis, talked to her mother and said, could something like that happen to me mm-hmm. or my dad or my brothers or my grandpa? And I had to tell her, uh, to uh, tell this kid of mine, I said, you got to tell her that, yes, this kind of thing happens to folks of color all the time. Jason, you have your hand up. So, so I, I have to ask an honest question. And, and, and sorry, I'm probably going to be called a racist after I ask this well, question. Well, well, you're an American. We all right. are. And, and, and I, I appreciate you, Jack, because you, you, know, you, you admit everybody's racist. So, but... So here, I'm a teenager. It's dark out. I'm driving a red sports kind of car-ish. It was a 1986 Audi Coupe GT. Mm -hmm. Oh, great car. I get pulled over. It's dark out. I get pulled over because I don't have a license plate light on. And the cop pulls me out of the car and is searching my car. And pointing at my license plate saying, I pulled you over because of this. And I'm searching your car because they saw some zigzags in there. Mm-hmm. I'm 18 years old. Zigzags are tobacco rolling papers. Did they pull me over? And actually, I told the cop, I'm like, so you said you pulled me over because I don't have license plate lights on. You're pointing at them. They're on. So did you pull me over because I'm Mexican? Very probably. It was dark out. When he walked up and saw you didn't have blue eyes and blonde hair. I, Actually, look. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I, I got to tell you. Lies, but yeah. it was dark out. I got to tell you something, out. though. I got to tell you look, something, though. There's another. There, there, I was a teenager. There are other reasons why cops will at times stop you. At a certain point in my life, I had hair down to here. I know you find that hard to believe now. What happened to But I had hair? hair down to here. And you're so evil. Uh, I got stopped by cops. I, if I tried to hail a cab in New York, no cabs would stop for me. I mean, so you, you, you know, anytime, anytime in America you don't fit that pattern that is considered normal, you, you've got a problem. That, you know, that, that was our, that was our time of the day. You know, that was our time when we had long hair. Yeah. That's when we got pulled over. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it, it it goes back to what you know Tom was saying yeah. earlier. Yeah, maybe we should have, and yeah. what I was saying last night is have a separate group to pull over people for tags and and lights and you know shit like that. You know, yeah. like the truck driving industry, the commercial. You know, have a separate group and then have all the hard ass cops do all the hard ass shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. Alan's dying. Yes, uh, Alan. Al, Al, Alan has his hand up, and then Ray. So, so, yeah, real quick, I was, uh, first of all, Alex, um, nothing worse than a board cop. And so, owner <laughs> right. down here and you and stuff, the guy, forget about race, just if he's bored, he'll find a reason to be busy. So, I was raised in California to not be a racist. And the first time I, and the community I grew up in and worked in is Fremont, California. And when I grew up, there were very few minorities in it, quote unquote. So, um, but the first time I saw racism was from coworkers in a police department that I worked for, Jack. And I didn't like it, you know? And, but you, everybody learns if you wanna keep your job, you keep your mouth shut. And they had codes, you know, ones were whites, twos were, I don't wanna go into all of it. I don't, right. I don't like this stuff. I heard a lot of nasty words and I walked away from people. And then I got some seniority and I started telling people, you know, you can't be that way. You got to be to a higher standard. And mm-hmm. anyhow, that was Ray. That. And then Jack. Uh, just a couple, like when I was in high school, I, I was driving my mom's big 400 Q 
cubic inch Pontiac and I had a cowboy hat on and I was in Palo Alto in Stanford and two Stanford cops pulled me over, mm -hmm. guns out, had me get out of the car. I hadn't done anything. It was simply because I was driving a big car and I had a cowboy hat on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no other reason. Yes. And, uh, and, oh. and um, uh, I, I just want to say one thing. I, when I keep, when I hear like everybody is racist, I just don't think that's true. I don't think I don't either. because I can tell you right now, I live with a woman from France. Swear to God, she's not racist. I have an 18 year old son, not racist. Am I a little racist? Yeah, I am. Yeah. So I mean, you can't just make these because like the rest of us, you hate the French. Like the rest of us, it's genetic. Like the rest of us, you hate the French. No, no, it's not. It is because it, it's, it's called culturalism. It's but you. Who's okay, culturalism number, is fine. Okay, but, but who's your number one? Who are you going to support? Number one, who are you going to kill for? Your family, right? Uh, how does this have, yeah. what does that have to okay. do with Okay, anyway, anyway. Just, 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 because okay. It, it goes on the community and the yeah. tribalism. Je, je, it, it's built into humanity. Je, it, it's, you know, nah, it, I'm sorry, I don't agree. I don't, Jack has his hand up. It Jack? just isn't. got to agree that we are tribal by nature. If you start talking to anthropologists, they'll tell you that the names for most ancient people means the real people. Now, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by, and I don't mean, let me rephrase this, what I mean about bigotry. Now, Alex knows the neighborhood that I grew up in in San Francisco, even back in the 50s, it was one of the most multicultural parts of the city. Mm -hmm. Which, what neighborhood? Bernal Heights. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I always say you can get your ass kicked by other kids that were your friends in four or five different languages. <laughs> and my family was the second black family to move into that neighborhood. And I'll never forget, one day, my dad had come home from the base he was looking out his window, surveying the new Chrysler that he had bought. Mm -hmm. And then he got just furious. He got furious because across the street, a family with a pickup truck, white and from Oklahoma, had moved in across the street for him. And he yelled to my mother, honey, there goes the goddamn neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Now, and, yeah. I saw the the hypocrisy of that, but I was only 12 years old, and I'm not going to argue with my drill instructor old man yeah. about shit like that. I'm going to keep my damn mouth shut, and hopefully he won't notice that I'm right. you know, smirking. Okay. Yeah. But uh, to show you how racism is, uh, for years and years and years, I lived in one of the artsy-fartsy areas of Dallas. And one day I'm going to my favorite restaurant for lunch before going to the radio station. And I see this young couple come out of the restaurant that I'm going into. And it's an interracial couple. And I felt my blood boil. Not only were they an interracial couple, but he was getting into one of my favorite automobiles. And as he got in, he patted the girl on the ass and and I started to laugh. Because you wanted he was to get black. in that too. Can you get I'm to sorry, the he, point? Can you get to the point yeah, of yeah. this, Jack? He was white, she was black, and the red-headed Irish girl that I've been living with for two years had just dumped my ass two weeks ago. <laughs> right? okay. And I knew he was yeah. gonna get some that night. Uh, and the yeah. and the best I could do is say, Where's the bottle of Jurgen's lotion? Yeah. <laughs> Vernon. <laughs> Vernon's got his hand up. Yeah. I think Jack hit on this a little bit. I think we we get the terms confused between bigotry, which we all have a certain amount of mm -hmm. bigotry mm -hmm. that's built into our DNA, and racist. Yes. Okay. Racism means you are actively discriminating against someone because of the color of their skin or their origin or something like that. That's mm -hmm. racism. Yeah. Bigotry can be like you're saying, you know, you're bigoted because you see an interracial couple and it's unusual and it doesn't sit right with you. That's bigotry. That's not racism. Okay, Matt, you haven't said anything. You might, do you want to say anything? Because uh, this is your first time back after two years and I want no. you to feel uh, as though you're welcome. 
I think I think Vernon made a great point. Um, I don't like. I think racism gets thrown around a lot, mm-hmm. and I think that bigotry is more of the problem than racism. I mean, I think Vernon, you know, touched on the point that a lot of people see, you know, I don't, I, I'm trying to formulate my thoughts, but yeah. Uh, I think I think that bigotry is a bigger problem than racism. I I think a majority of people aren't racist, but I think bigotry is more of the problem because um, they see something that's quote unquote unnatural or or discriminate black people for right. X, Y, and Z. So yeah. Let well, me go to Tom because black Tom, folks don't, don't think we uh, black hey, folks uh, don't discriminate. Uh, yeah, yeah. We do too. Oh, let me, <laughs> let me, let me, every everybody discriminates. That's, let me go to Tom because sure. he has his hand. And up. I, I fully yeah. agree that um, if you're a black person, being pulled over by a police officer is definitely more scary yeah. than a white person being pulled over. Like, if I was a black person, oh. like when I got my DUI, I would be scared shitless that. Anything that I did, any movement that I did could have caused me to be shot. And as a mm-hmm. white person, that's not something that I feel like would happen. Mm-hmm. But as a black person, like if I'm reaching for my wallet and I'm going mm-hmm. into my my pocket, right. that could be determined as, hey, I'm reaching for a gun. Yeah, and we only that, have a few minutes left here. I, did yeah, you have your hand up, Tom? I did, and I just want to say, yeah, I, I thoroughly disagree. I think, I think racism is a serious problem, and mm-hmm. uh, we've seen it more and more. Uh, uh, a book that really changed my mind about the whole situation was uh, Michelle Alexander's um, *The New Jim Crow*. So I really strongly stress that, that people should realize, realize, say, yes, racism. Is a, is, a, is a deeply rooted problem in this country. Mm-hmm. And it gets back to something that was the, the start of this conversation. I'm glad Jack brought it up. And that is, well, he was no angel. You know, uh, you'll go back and you'll find, well, we have this, well, he did this and he did this. And so that's the reason why the police did this. But when you come back to it, it's it, it all, the, the, the whole system itself, mm-hmm channels people into the criminal justice system that's that's what 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 we're really need to to, to focus on and yeah. deal with and yes all of us have racial bias even myself i grew and i grew up in a very racist family a, a very white racist irish catholic family mm-hmm. and so i am very aware of it but even then you know, as I said, when you talk about implicit bias, we're talking about parts of your brain you are not aware of. Much of, most of That's what right. our brains are engaged in yeah. is an unconscious thought that has nothing to do with what's going on in what we're actually thinking about at the moment. And we're re- yeah. reacting to those, those biases. And so on that, uh, I'll conclude yeah. for the evening. Ray, you had your hand up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I think maybe there's degrees of racism, but to put everybody into a bucket, we're all racist. Yeah. It just yeah. doesn't. So, okay. so the we're, problem we're, is, is like there is implicit racism that's deep in parts of our society, even in parts of California and the Central Valley and the, some yeah. parts okay. of the East Bay. We're, we're running discussed. out of time here. Well, you are, okay. Yeah. I just want to say it's just not. Oh, okay. it's just not helpful yeah. to say everyone is racist. Um, it just it doesn't help address all, the problem. Jeff, I think Jeff, we can let, all pretty let, much uh, say that the no. whole Republican Party has been taken over by racist stuff. Doesn't can weird. we all agree on that? I think so. Ah. Good, uh, uh, Jeff, that, and then what, what? What we should all remember is that every black family has to give their kid when they're at a certain age the it's story. Not- yeah, I have talk. the talk to, and yeah. I give the talk, talk to my kid also. You yeah. give the talk to your kid too, Jason? Oh, yeah, yeah I do. Jack, I mean, you've got exactly 10 seconds to say whatever you got to say because there's a show coming on right I mean, after you. Would I be okay getting on Jack's show? Or yeah, would I be, sure. 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 Okay. Because I got something I want to dispute that somebody said, so all of you guys call back. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that because we're running uh, at the end of this show, so the next show can come on, you know. 
Hey, listen, we've had, uh, we have, if you notice here, we have 14 people here. It's, it's a lot of people. Uh, uh, always good to hear from you, Tom. Great to hear from you. Uh, Trucker Steve, where are you tonight? What part of the country? Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, on Nebraska. Uh, on the way to your, your old stopping grounds. San Francisco. Yeah, okay. And also Jack's old stomping grounds, too. He just left us because he has to go do his show. Uh, 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 by the way, we gotta, we got to thank uh, uh, Charlie Wallace and John Larkin and Alan and Jeffrey Stein and Vernon Nunn. Matt, call us again, will you? It's great to see you after all this time. And remind us who you were. Uh, and uh, thanks to Jason, better known as Owner. Uh, and uh, J Tony Magno, you haven't said anything tonight, but that's fine, Tony. Yeah. Always, I enjoyed the conversation. always nice to Get have you job, here. Good anyway. job, Tony. Kevin, thank you so much. What does the WBKWS mean? No, that's Kevin's call sign. Is that Kevin's call? I have call my call sign up there. He had to have his up. Oh, there. I see. Okay. And of course, uh, Ray Renati. Uh, all of you, give a big wave goodbye, okay? And I'll give you a big wave goodbye as well. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the uh, with the uh, intersection, and on that program, he uses Skype, okay? And the call sign for Skype is Gabnet Live. Gabnet Live. Uh, just call on Skype and uh, continue this discussion with him. That's it for me. That's all she wrote for tonight. I'll see you again on Monday at 4 with our little pop-up show and then again on Tuesday at 10.30. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. Wear a mask. And if you haven't gotten it yet, Get the old shot in the arm. Good night, everybody.